it's me again. I'm going to be walking you through a desktop user's guide to WebWriter. So introductions. Now, those of you who've come over from uh, the previous track, you can probably tell me what the introduction is, but we'll go through it. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Mike Rogers. I'm head of product development at HomeGage. Uh, I've been with HomeGage for about three years. I'm based in Chicago, currently in my garage and I've been in the software development space for about 20 years, working in multiple different areas, construction, legal, a um, uh, bunch of different areas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk through a little bit about um, what WebWriter is, why we kind of built WebWriter, and then we're gonna talk about some advantages of WebWriter over desktop right now. And then we're gonna show you kind of side by side. And I really do wanna stress that these things are designed to work side by side. So this is really intended for someone who's pretty familiar with HomeGage already. Um, if you're not, and you're just curious, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you're welcome to join this, but I do recommend that you maybe go back and watch some of the earlier introductions on uh, WebWriter first. So first up, let's uh, jump in. So what is WebWriter? If you're new to HomeGage, you may not know that WebWriter is the latest addition to the HomeGage suite. We launched WebWriter about 18 months ago based on requests from users for really a faster and more modern experience. Uh, WebWriter is built from the ground up on the latest technology and it's designed to work on any device in a browser or as an app offline. And that's huge. It absolutely works offline and it works across devices and it works across devices seamlessly. So why did we develop WebWriter? Put simply, needs have changed. Um, the original desktop architecture was designed and implemented 20 years ago. Um, now we've been updating it regularly um, this year over the last few months, we've been rolling out updates for the companion apps and the desktop um, every month. And that's gonna continue for the foreseeable future. We're gonna be updating that every single month. We're, we just uh, did a release, I think it was uh, two weeks ago, and we're already working on the next version. But there are some things that are just limited by their architecture. And so uh, just to pull out some examples. So if you're in a multi-inspector organization uh, and you want to share your library, your comment library or your templates across the org, you've got to share files or sometimes we uh, have folks like swapping them via the cloud. And it's not very collaborative. Sometimes it writes over information you've got. Um, you're not able to really um, merge templates very easily. Uh, again, without losing data. Um, then what if what happens if you switch devices? We get a whole bunch of calls where folks say, hey, I've got a new laptop. How do I set up web, uh, uh, the report writer on my new, new laptop? And lots and lots of calls come in where we walk people through, hey, get, here's where your data folder is, here's where you bring all your templates across, and here's your store of old reports. Do you have them on backup on a disk? It's a lot of risk and it's a lot of things and inspectors are telling us they want an easier way to do that. So that's where WebWriter comes in. Everything's consolidated. It works on any device. Everything's synchronized to the cloud. That's really the, where the name WebWriter comes from. It's all based in the web. It's all being stored in the web, but that doesn't mean that you only have to work in the web. It does absolutely work offline. Um, one of the other things that we get from existing inspectors is they say, <coughs> really the models are changing. They're saying, we wanna be able to collaborate on the same inspection or we want to be able to collaborate on um, our comment libraries, or we want to be able to build a template together. Maybe you're a multi-inspector firm and you're like, hey, look, we all want to collaborate on this and make the best comment library available to everyone seamlessly all at once without having to have someone go over and transfer HR5 files and put them in the right folder and risk uh, overtaking what's, what's already there. Um, then there's the, the other thing is you can't use multiple devices as seamlessly on desktop as folks want. So we've got the companion. And the big thing that folks are telling us about the companion is, hey, it'd be great if I could do all the things I can do on desktop that I can on companion. And the way the architecture is built really makes it difficult for us to do that. And we're, we're trying to get as close as we can, but it's not really geared up for that. So that's one of the things that um, WebRice is jumping in to address. And then historically, um, HomeGage built the Android app first and it put a lot of work into uh, making the Android app great. And then the Apple app came second. 
And we've, we've heard over the years that the Apple app just isn't on, on the same par. And we're putting lots and lots of work into making that a seamless experience. It's the same, but it's, it's taking a long time. And again, it's down to that architecture. It's an older architecture. They're never going to be quite the same. And so uh, that really leads into kind of the last point, which is folks have to get trained on how to use the desktop. Then the same folks have to get trained on how to use the companion. And I think the companion's awesome, but it's different. And some of the features work differently and some of them aren't available. And if you're using it on Android, there's some things that are a little bit different on Apple. And so it's not really a seamless experience when you're trying to work between those different devices. You've got to show up for all the different training sessions. It takes a lot longer to get up to speed. So that's really some of the things that we were, those are the points of feedback that we were looking at when we were starting to put WebWriter together was inspectors are starting to ask us for something, which we don't think the current platform is really going to be able to deliver because of the architecture. So why should you use a WebWriter? Um, let me start by saying you absolutely don't need to use the web writer. Um, it is designed to work in conjunction with the desktop. Um, I do think there's some real benefits for existing users to give it a shot in certain circumstances and find out what works for you. Perhaps you use it for certain kinds of inspections, perhaps you use it for certain instances, maybe it's residential focused. Here's some big reasons why um, we find folks have started to ask us uh, for training sessions, why folks are starting to migrate to it. So some of the big reasons is folks want to collaborate and that's not really the, the existing platform isn't so collaborative. Certainly some of the multi-inspector firms are telling us that transferring templates and managing templates between individuals and trying to standardize everything, it's a real pain and it's a real bind. It takes a lot of additional work and there's always differences and there's always things that, um, uh, that are issues for them. So those are, those are some of the reasons standardizing the comments across an organization. Um, by default, all of your comments in WebWriter are universal across the entire organization. So you've got a standard comment library. If I go in and add a comment, my colleagues can take advantage of that comment straight away. And then we can come up with a universal set of comments that applies to all templates across our entire company. And that's a big reason some of the uh, multi-inspectors are saying, Hey, look, this saves us so much time. We don't have to administer. We don't have to have folks that are employed basically to make sure that all these things work. And then another big thing is you don't have to worry about the IT side of it. Again, lots of folks, I, I, I work in technology. I've worked in technology for a number of years. It's a love-hate problem with computers. There's always an update for Windows. There's always a problem with um, the latest Mac update. I always say, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be the first wave of folks that get the latest Mac update. You don't have to worry about so many of those problems because most of the web writer is operating in a browser if you want it. So on the app side of things, iOS and Android, you've got an offline app if you want it. That works completely offline. You can inspect, but as a backup anywhere on any device that's got a browser, you can bring it up. Doesn't matter if you're on the latest version of Windows or you're a few versions back, or if you're on the uh, latest version of iOS, or a few versions back, or if you just want to do certain things on your tablet in the evening, doesn't matter if it's a Windows tablet, Android, iOS, it's all just going to work. <laughs> and then the, um, the other thing that we're seeing is, certainly from some of the younger inspectors, there's an expectation that they can do everything on their phone. You get it now, um, I, I noticed this is a generational gap, but we're finding more and more Folks are saying, hey, look, I just want to be able to do everything on the phone and be done with my inspection. I want to go home at night and know that my last inspection was done when I left the site. Now, you still might have some paperwork to do and some other things, but they're like, the inspecting side of it, that's the dream. They want to be able to go out, go to that inspection, be focused on that inspection because they don't have all these leftover items from the previous inspection and know that they're not going to be doing hours and hours of work, tidying up annotations looking through their photo gallery and trying to figure out what that problem was at the time. And so really it's about saving time and being done with the inspection when you leave that, that job. Let's go through um, some things that are the same and some things that are different. Now I've picked some main items. This is not a complete exhausted list, but I'm gonna work through um, some, of the, some of the things. These are common questions that I get asked. So I thought I'd get it out of the way, let folks see exactly what it does and doesn't do right now. So 
Uh, they both work offline, desktop writer and the web writer. They both work offline. So if you live in a rural area, totally fine. Uh, if you're an Android or an iOS user, totally fine. They both work offline, both work on phones and tablets. I actually think the web writer is going to be a bit of an easier experience because it's going to look and feel exactly the same, whether you use a phone, a tablet, or um, the desktop. <laughs> Next up is the comment library. Now, there is an area where it's a little bit different. The comment libraries in desktop are very much tied to the templates. So the template contains everything. It contains the print format, it's the order of systems, it's the, the order of locations, and it's all the comments associated with that template. On the web writer, we broke a few of those things apart because we heard from a lot of inspectors that they really wanted a global comment library. And they wanted it to be really easy and they wanted it to be applied to whichever template they want. So if they create a new template, they don't have to figure out how to import all the comments. It's just a case of mapping them. So the comment library on WebWriter is global to all templates and it's global to an organization as well by default. Now we're gonna be uh, providing some different breakdowns of that, but right now it's global across templates and an organization. And that's a big advantage over desktop where you don't have to manage all these things separately. Uh, and then I brushed on this a little bit earlier is it works the same across devices. Uh, this seems like a small thing, but we host training webinars showing folks specifically how to conduct inspections on the companion. And then we have to keep telling them, well, okay, you have to do this thing on the desktop, then you transfer it to the cloud, then you bring it back down to the companion. And then oh, actually you can't do this thing on the companion. So you got to take it back up to the cloud then put it back on the desktop and you finish it here. And they're a little bit different. And then we inevitably get Mac users and they go, okay, well, it's a bit different for me. How do I do that? And you're like, oh, okay. Well, we, there's a whole separate training webinar for that. Definitely, definitely. The big thing that we wanted to address for WebWriter, there's one training, you learn it once, it works the same on all devices. And that's a big thing that we've done. So I'm gonna go through very briefly, I'm gonna be side by side on the desktop and the web writer. Now, if you're in companion, some of the things for the desktop companion are not gonna work the same or they might not be available. Annotations, for example, on the web writer, it's all gonna be the same. You're gonna you're gonna see the view, I can make the screen smaller, that's what it's gonna look like on mobile. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, that's what it's gonna be like on tablet. Full screen, that's what it's gonna be on a laptop. That's it. Do the training sessions and the training sessions for WebWriter can get done in about 40 minutes, half an hour. Uh, annotations on mobile, we already covered, but that is one of the largest items of feedback that we get from uh, inspectors. Now, towards the end of the day, I'm gonna give you a little uh, summary of uh, the inspector survey and a huge thank you to everyone who responds to the inspector survey. It makes an enormous difference to HomeGage and the direction we go in. Your feedback absolutely drives what we build, how we build it, how we talk about it, the different services we want to offer, how we price things. All of that goes into how we deliver HomeGage to you. Um, so there was a, a big, big push recently where we were really looking at inspectors. The biggest piece of feedback for Companion is annotations. They want to be able to do that on the mobile device and they want to be able to publish from a mobile device. And that's one of the things that it's a limitation with Companion. We're still trying to deliver some of those things, but the platform, it's a much older platform. The iOS and the Android, they're on separate code bases and we're trying to make it them the same. We're addressing all of that with the web writer and I'll show you how that's, uh, that's the same experience everywhere. And really everyone's telling us they want to be able to publish everywhere. They don't want to be tied to a specific um, device to publish. So I notice um, it's a really, really common uh, device is one of the Surface books. And I think they're awesome. I've got one myself. We use that for testing. I think it's a great device. Inspectors are using that primarily because they need a Windows device to run the HomeGage desktop software. That's the only way that they can publish the inspection. They go out with a phone and they, they uh, take pictures with Companion. They'll be adding some comments on Companion. Ultimately, they need that tablet to finish their inspection. Now, the world with WebWriter is you don't need that tablet. If you prefer that tablet and you want to use that tablet, great. If it speeds up inspections, use it. However, you shouldn't need a separate device. So that's what we're allowing is all of the devices are synced up. All the devices, you can work across them seamlessly. You can say, hey, look, 
I'm going to take these pictures on my phone because it's got an awesome camera. Then I'm going to switch across to my Surface Book because I've got a nice big, big screen and I'm going to make sure those annotations are exactly the way I want it. Don't have to, I could do them on my phone if I wanted. And then I could go back to my phone and publish it from there if I want. And so that's really the difference with WebWriter. It's giving you the ability and the flexibility to publish from anywhere because we know you're on the move and it's not always convenient to go fire up a laptop, synchronize everything, make sure of it, check through everything, do all the annotations before you go. Um, and then really that leads into using multiple devices. I've seen a lot of inspectors uh, toolkits, they're extensive. So you're showing up with a drone, you've got a burner tablet because you're dropping them and you, you go through one every six weeks, but the cameras on them are kind of crappy and they don't have a flash. So you've got your uh, Samsung S22, which has got the awesome camera. You want to be able to work on multiple devices if it makes your life easier. We want to be able to support that and we should be able to support that. And that's what WebWrite is about. It's about working seamlessly across all those devices. Uh, the next one is, uh, the, these two are kind of tied together, room by room inspecting and system by system inspecting. Now, both WebWriter and desktop conduct this, um, but I will be working through uh, in the demonstration how it's done a little bit differently on WebWriter. You don't have to make that decision in the template. So we find often for desktop users, you've got one set of templates that it's room by room, and then you've got one that's system by system. If you're already starting an inspection and you actually figure out, you know what, this kind of inspection, I really would have preferred to have done room by room. You're, you're out of options, especially if you're on the um, companion app. The web writer, you can conduct inspections in multiple different ways, and it doesn't affect how the reports um, output it. And so that, that's a big difference. And then uh, we've got location. Uh, locations are assigned to items automatically. And you're going to see when we go through this room by room reporting, location mapping is done automatically for you. Um, if you're using smart text, I think smart text is awesome. It's very, very powerful. Uh, but some of the some of the primary things that we see in captions for images and on uh, smart text is really just dictating the location of something. <coughs> so I've done a lot of talking today, so my voice is going a little bit. Um, you'll go in and you'll say, hey, look, uh, I've got an issue with the GFCI. And then you've got a smart text caption where you've got to select from a drop down. Okay, it's in this location. And here's the severity label. You don't have to do a lot of that. If you report room by room in the web writer, that is automatically assigned. And you can still deliver the report system by system if that's what you prefer. And it'll just have the little notations showing you that it was uh, which rooms those uh, defects were in. So I've done a lot of talking about um, what's different and what's the same. I'm a visual learner. I'm sure you're the same. Let's just get into it and let's have a look. So what I'm going to do is I've got the um, browser open on the left-hand side and I've got um, a desktop writer on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to go through the process of creating an appointment and then I'm going to bring in that appointment into, web, into the web writer and to the desktop. And I'm going to show you how I can work really on the same property in two different um, platforms and how they're compatible. Um, now, the one caveat is you can't start an inspection on WebWriter and take over that very same inspection on the desktop or vice versa. The platforms are different. The way the data is stored behind the scenes is a little bit differently. So um, you can work on them separately. You can publish back to the folder, but they will be separate reports. There won't be the uh, combined report. Uh, so that's the only caveat. And so let's jump straight into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an appointment. So I've got a very busy day. There's no way I'd ever do uh, four inspections in a day. So let's go to Saturday. I'm going to block this out. Let me add in some basic information. And I'm not going to take you through this in any great detail. This is really just to show you how uh, the process is for bringing reports into each of the platforms. So I'm going to schedule that appointment, create the documents. I'm not going to send any of the notifications. I'm just going to jump straight over that. And then we've got this enormous appointment over here. So this is sitting in here. You should be pretty familiar, familiar with this process. I'm going to go to services, 
I'm going to download online appointments and I'm looking for five, six, seven, Blake, there we go. And I want to download that one specifically and get rid of these guys. I don't need them right now. I'll download that. There we go. And then I'm going to click on open and I'll go to five, six, seven, Blake. There we go. Hold on. Let me open this guy. Great. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the web writer. So I'm going to jump over. Oh, actually, all I've got to do is from the appointment, I'm going to hit this little plus button. And that is going to promote that into a web writer inspection automatically for me. So I'm going to jump over here. And I'm going to refresh this page. And let's have a look. Where is 567 Lake? There we go. Right at the top. 567 West Lake. So I'm going to open this up. Now I'm going to go through these um, uh, side by side. So, oh, hold on. Close it down real quick. I don't just notice the problem there. Let's, let me open up Home Gauge again. I don't know if you saw that. I was getting a strange message from uh, Parallels, but this is running. There we go. We'll open this up again. Uh, contains the following customer data. There we go. So we're, we've imported these um, uh, appointments into each of the web writers. Now it's the same appointment, it's just in either system. There's no conflicts, you can absolutely do this, there's no problems. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna populate some of the report information. So let's, uh, first choice I've gotta make on the desktop side is I've gotta pick a template. I've gotta decide which comment library I'm gonna use, what report type it is, whether I want to conduct this room by room or system by system. So in this instance, I'm gonna go, you know what, I'm gonna go system by system. I'll create this and then I'll go into the general info. On the web writer side, I don't have to make that decision. We've got a system by system view already built in. If you watch the previous session on templates, I've got the ability to customize all of this. So I can say, hey, I've got the order of how I want the systems. And I've got the order of how I want all the locations and which items are present, the mappings of all the comments. So I've already got that, that mapping set up, but I've got a system by system view. I've also got a location by location view or a room by room view available as well within the same inspection. So I don't need to make that decision. So we're gonna go back to the overview quickly. And then I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna start populating some of the information. It's all basic. This is the night before. I'm gonna say, yeah. And where is this information in the web writer? <clears throat> very, very similar. Going through here. Now, I had it built into my template, but it made some of these decisions for me and it auto populated some of those. Uh, so I'm, I don't need to worry about those, but I'm going to go in and say, yep, there was rain. Uh, let's go square footage. Uh, I'll say it's uh, 1900 square feet. Start at home. Oh, quick. It's a bungalow. There we go. And then I've got the uh, summary here and I could put in some uh, disclaimers if I wanted to. Here, I've got some disclaimers out of the box. I'm gonna add those. I have a very quick preview of what that inspection is gonna look like. We've already got the bare bones of the inspection now. So general information, let's jump down to the information I've added. Now this is in tablet view. If I was using a tablet, this is what it'd look like. If I was wanting to do all this on a mobile, I'm on a cell phone, that's exactly what it looked like. Full screen, that's what it looks like on a uh, full screen on a laptop. So you can work on any device and it's all exactly the same. So this is, uh, let's have a look, yep, summary. And I've already got these bare bones areas for all of the concerns and they've all uh, categorized for me. Now they'll get placed in there automatically based on the severity levels of any of the comments that I add. Scope of inspection, this is where all the disclaimers are. Great, okay, I can start. Now, if I was in Texas, again, I didn't have to choose the Texas template. Texas has got a very different way of inspecting. The print format is entirely different. I didn't have to select any template at all. I inspect the same way I'm working. 
It's entirely laid out differently. I've got all this legalese at the start. Texas is very strict about these formats. It's all there. It's all populated for me in the same format. I don't have to select those templates up front. And that's a really big difference with WebWriter. You inspect the same way you normally inspect and the output is entirely separate. So I'm gonna switch back to the standard view. Again, it's just the view. So I'm gonna go back. Nothing here has changed. So then I'm gonna go through and I'm going through system by system. I actually wanna go through system by system. That's completely fine. So I'm gonna go into the roof. There we go. And my template said that these were automatically um, marked as inspected. If I wanna go through here, let's say, I wanna say these are not inspected. I double click on that. It marks them all as not inspected. Very similar in WebWriter. So they were inspected by default because that's what's in my template. If I wanna override it, I say, you know what? Not tested. And I can override all of those in one shot. Uh, and then let's go through and I say, hey, look, there's a problem with the flashing. Let's add a comment. So I've got my list of comments here and I've got all my categories. Now I can, I can start filtering these down to flashing and I'm looking through, I've got to kind of read through what I want. Uh, okay, so I think I want this one. Uh, da, da, da. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'll add that as an itemized. Now on the web writer side, I can just click in here. I can manage the comments and I can search for them. Uh, so I want all the ones that say damaged, done. Damaged, signs of water intrusion, done. And these comments already have all of the components built in. They're already broken into um, all the different areas that I want. So I'm gonna click on one of these, go back very quickly. I click on show details. I'm gonna edit that comment. Now in here, I definitely can override any of the details in the comment in the desktop writer. I can definitely do that. But I can also do it in the web writer. The difference is we've broken all that information out into the description the status, the impact, the suggestion, and the other items. And the status impacts where it shows up on the inspection report. It, it, it dictates which icon it has. If I mark this as a major concern, if I add that to the inspection, it's automatically gonna be added to the summary. And then I'm gonna look at the summary and there'll be a hyperlink and I go, oh, that's, that's a really important thing. I can click on that item and I can go down and I can see more detail. It's just the same. If I want to override any of these details, I can go through. If I'm on a mobile device, I can go voice to text. Some laptops have that now. I can go voice to text if I want, even on my desktop. And I can start adding those things in any of these fields. And I can edit it on the fly. And that would apply. Um, a big difference is any of these changes here. So if I want to add an item, I've got to add it to the template. And I've got to remember when I close out of this report that I didn't actually want to save those changes to the template. Any changes here, I want to add that. I get the option. Hey, do you want to replace the original comment, which is replace it in your comment library permanently? Or do you just want to use it for this inspection? Or do you want to keep the original one and create a clone of it? And that will still apply it, but you've got now got two of those comments and they're in the library and they're automatic. Any future inspection, they're there. So I'm gonna say replace it and there we go. And then let's pull in some of the uh, media. So I'm gonna go into, now this is where if you're on uh, a Mac, if you're a Mac user, that's where things can get a little tricky. So trying to get data onto the right folder on a Mac can be real tricky so that you can see it on there. So I'm gonna go in here and I'll go into documents and inspection images and I'll pull in all these images. Now this is just local to my desktop. I'm gonna do the same thing. It's really the same folder. I'm gonna go in on the web writer and I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna add photos. Now, if I was on a phone, that would give you the option to take a photo there and then. But I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna get these same photos and I'm gonna add them. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna look over and I'm gonna say, hey, I've got any, issue, any, any pictures of the chimney or the flashing up here? Da, da, da. No, we don't in this instance, but you know what? I'm going to go over to uh, da, da, garage. I'm going to see if I've got any items there. There we go. I'm going to say there's GFCI. Now I'm going to add 
an annotation real quick. I'm gonna put a rectangle around this. And then it's giving me a, a message here and it's saying, hey, look, you can add this, but once you hit OK, it's committing it. And this is some of those architectural things again. The way that the library that we were using in order to add annotations to images, it requires that it writes over on the image itself. So once I lock that in, my options are remove that image, pull it back in from uh, the library, or wipe out all the annotations. I cannot carry on on the companion and continue with that inspection. I'm going to go do the same thing on the uh, web writer side. So I've gone in there and I've said, hey, look, uh, so I'm in the garage and the inspection items. And you know what? I don't have GFCI in the garage. So I've got to go through here. I've got to add an item, GFCI. I'm going to add it. I'm going to say it was inspected. I'm going to pull it across. Yep. And I'll add that annotation. Now I had to add that. And there we go, I've got the same message again. Now here's the same process in the web writer. Now I'm in the photo gallery. I could go through system by system if I wanted, or I can just go through and say, uh, actually, I don't have the same uh, image pulled in. Let's, uh, this is an outlet. I can just click on that, click on assign, search and go outlet. And then I'll say, let's say I was missing, uh, missing a cover. Done. That's it. Uh, I've added that comment. I've said it's missing a cover or it's damaged. And I've assigned a photo to it. And if I go into the system view, and I go into electrical, which is similar to where we were, there we go, we've got outlet in there. It's got that little icon next to it. Outlet cover is damaged. He's repair and replace and I've got all the details in there. And now I'm going to annotate this guy. And there we go, I'm going to annotate this, I'm going to save it. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to switch over now and I'm going to switch to my phone and I'm going to carry on exactly where we left off. And that's another big difference that you're going to see with uh, the desktop versus web writer. Folks are telling us, hey, look, there's some things I just have to do on the desktop. And there's some things I really want to be able to do on the uh, mobile app. That's what we've solved with uh, the web writer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hopefully the Zoom gods are going to be kind to me today and we're going to share my screen. Three, two, one, there we go. Right, so we're going to go into that same inspection. Let me brush this to the side. Uh, 857 West Vermont Street, I'm going to go in here. Now, I only have to do this once. Now, I could work entirely offline if I want. So, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to synchronize some of these changes. I'm going to take a photo live. And uh, welcome to my garage. I'm going to take a picture of there's some corking missing. I've added that to my library. I'm going to annotate that. I'm going to say, yeah, corking missing. And I'm going to assign it. Let's look for window. And components window. There we go. We've got an issue there. Done. I'm working offline. Let me synchronize to the cloud. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to push those changes that I just made on my um, phone, and it's going to pull in any changes from uh, the web. Let's make sure I was in the, oh, no, I was in the wrong inspection. Let me just jump into the right one. So it was. 567 West State Street. Okay. That's where, there we go. I went into the wrong inspection. Let's do the same thing again. I'm going to go into the photo view. I'm going to add a photo. Let's take one. There we go. It's super fast. It's not even uh, a big issue for me to do that. Let me just go in quickly. Take a photo. Done. Don't know if the Zooms, uh, the Zoom gods are not enjoying this right now. Let me refresh the data. Now that's going to pull down all of the work that I was just looking at. There we go. It's pulling in all the images. I can still be working offline and I can be working on other elements. Go to the photos. Oh, pretty quick. Hold on. Refresh that data. That'll pull in all the information. And I'll be able to carry on seamlessly 
where I left off. So where was it? It was 567. There we go, Westlake Street. Photos, all of them are pulled in. And then what we're gonna do is, what was that annotation that I made earlier? So I had a look at, there we go. I click on this guy. I can annotate this. Done that on a phone. I'm on an iPhone. And there we'll continue, one sec. We'll synchronize this to the cloud. And now we're gonna switch back over to the Hey, Mike, I can't hear you. I just, anybody, let me see if anybody else is having anybody else. One second, Mike, I just want to see if it's just me or no audio. Yeah, I think that, I don't know if something happened with your headphones, but I, we just lost, yeah. Okay, one second. You're back, you're back. I could, I could hear you for a second. No, I can't hear you now. Nothing. Nothing. Can't hear ya. Hey folks, are you able yep. to hear me now? Yep, awesome. we can yep, hear you now. Phew, you're back. Uh, the, the tribulations of uh, technology. So my headphones failed. Right, so here we go. We've uh, seamlessly, we've gone back and forth between the application and the web. We're able to continue this and I'm gonna go through and let's say, I'm gonna go through location by location. Because this is the this is the big uh, advantage here, where you don't need the captions as well. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to say uh, I've got a problem with G GFCI, and cover is missing. And I've got a lot of those not present. There we go. And we'll go back to go through uh, bathroom. And let's say I went in the basement, and I noticed um, a surprise kitchenette. So I can really easily just go in and add an item. So I can go and say, hey, look, appliances, cooktop. I can add that guy. Now, if I do it on here, if I go through in, the, in, the, um, in this view, let's say it's in the basement. I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't really have this. I've got built-in kitchen appliances. Now I've got a choice where I've got to, do I create another component or do I just add it here? Do I add another uh, cook top two? Do I add it here? And then to any of the images, do I add the caption to say, actually this was in the basement? That's where you can run into some problems with uh, the templates being set from the start. So I could say um, basement. Top. And it's additional work. And if I go through and I find any issues, oh, I don't have any comments because I haven't pulled them in um, from the template. On the web writer side, if I want to go over to Cooktop Basement, it's already got the styles and materials because we know from the blueprint that's sitting in the uh, template what kind of item it is. And then we can pull in any of those comments. Control knobs, gas valves missing. And then let me go back to the report real quick. 
I'm going to preview that. And I'm going to say appliances. Hey, I've got cooktop. This one's in the kitchen. But then I've got safety concerns with the one in the basement. And that is a big difference where I didn't have to do that additional typing. I didn't have to assign it um, directly from uh, the caption. So that's a, that's a, a big change there. Uh, let's look at some of the other items. So uh, let me jump through. For those of you that weren't in the previous session about templates, all of this can be configured. And you can decide on where the location, what items are in each of the locations directly from the template. And you can set the statuses. You can do all of that within the template. So it's there for you ready on the web writer. And that's getting similar to what you can do on desktop. So we're nearing the end of the inspection and I want to preview. So I'm on the companion and I want to preview that inspection for the um, customer. So what I'd have to do on the desktop is I'd probably have to pull out the surface book. I'd have to synchronize everything. I have to make sure that um, all, all, the, all the changes are there. And then I can bring up on the surface book. I can go, okay, yep. Here's a quick preview. And then I say, hey, look, just so you know, built-in kitchen appliances. This was actually cooked up too. This is in the basement. I'm going to tidy that up on the, on the final inspection, but it's there. On the web writer, I can just jump in on the preview on any device. Now, this does need a browser right now, but I can jump in and I can say, hey, look, oh, I lost internet. You guys still there? Yes, we're here. We're here. Ah. Got technical difficulties on this end. Let me just jump in. Ah, my Safari's crashed. Hold on. I can jump in on any device and I'm able to give a preview. Uh, then last but not least, let's jump through CYA images. So a big difference that we've got with um, the web writer over the desktop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over back to my phone for this one very quickly. And I'm going to say, let's see if uh, Zoom gods are kind to us again. CYA images. Now I've got a problem with my internet connection on my laptop. So I can just go straight over to the app because it works offline. That's not an issue. The images that you have on the desktop, a lot of folks are telling me that the image library, they have to keep separate hard drives with all their CYA for things like what the positions were of the circuit breaker. Maybe they were checking the hose bib and they've got to say they got proved that it was turned off when they left. Lots of different things like that, locks, different gates, things like that. All the images in WebWriter, anything that's unassigned will remain in this view for you on your uh, report in the WebWriter. These are your CYA images. The only images that make it into a report are the ones that are in the home tour, the, the ones that are assigned to the cover image or assigned to any of the concerns within the inspection. Everything else is there for your um, CYA. So I could go in here and say, hey, look, uh, original positions of panel done. That will save that. I can come back to that at any point. If someone says, hey, look, you, um, you left the, the pool pump off and the pool went green and you caused all this damage. We had to get someone out and we had to do all this work. You can come back, even though it wasn't in the inspection, you can come back and you can say, hey, look, here's the original, here's the original um, panel positions. Nope, that's, uh, that, that's not my problem. Um, you can also, if you want to, as an added CYA, you can add some of these items in your home tour as well. So you can say, hey, look, they're not related to a specific concern, but I do want to show you that I inspected them. I do want to show you that I looked at these items and show you what the original positions were. So it's very similar. You can just be in the um, uh, photo first view and you can say assign to home tour, done. And it'll add all those items at the bottom of the inspection in the home tour for you. 
Uh, so I do want to give folks um, time to ask questions. I'm going to switch over very quickly to um, the Q&A, and then what we'll do is get some questions from the group, and uh, we'll go over anything from you. So let's uh, let's bring them up. Uh, Chris Matthews is saying, can you provide a link for web writer training, specifically how to add comments to the library? Yes. Uh, so there's uh, two things. I'll take you over. Um, at the end of uh, this uh, conference, we're going to be sending out recordings. Just prior to this, I did a whole session on how to um, customize your comment library and your templates. We'll send out a recording of that. Also, if you look in the masterclass, they're on our YouTube channel, which I've got a link to. The Masterclass channel will talk you through all the basics of getting set up with WebWriter. It's how to create comments, how to create your first inspection, how to modify your comment library. Uh, let's have a look. Um, question from Chris. Uh, but why is it on the report already if I can't actually populate it? Not sure I follow that one, Chris. Uh, we'll come back to you on that one. Uh, do you know how many photos is the limit? Um, so we don't really have a hard limit. This is from uh, Champion Properties. Uh, we have inspections with three, 400 um, photos included. Some of those are in the inspection itself, and some of those are the CYA images. Typically, we see about 150, 200 photos in the inspection itself, and then the rest are CYA. And those are always stored for you in the web writer. Uh, Anonymous has said, for assigning locations, I like to point out the positive items so it's not all bad, uh, bad news. Um, can you differentiate between the location of specific rooms? Uh, yes, yes, you can. So you do, uh, if you look back, I recommend you look at the previous session that I did on uh, templates. You've got the option. When you go uh, location by location, you can have shared items. And I find this is really common for say plumbing. So you've got pipes which span multiple rooms. You might want to have that as a shared where a pipe is present in multiple rooms, or you could have separate items, so different appliances. Uh, one of the examples I used in uh, that demonstration was the insulation. I said, hey, I've got attic insulation and I've got garage insulation. And they're different materials and they might have different problems. You can set that up as well. And you can set that up location by location. Um, let's have a look, another question. If we're going to purchase a new device for the up and coming year using uh, the mobile app, HomeGage, what device is recommended? Uh, and I'd say it's very, very easy for WebWriter. Um, Android and iOS, any of the modern devices um, are supported. I use uh, an iPhone mini, an iPad mini, I've got a Surface Book and an Android tablet. And I work across all of those devices with the same apps and it all works just the same. Uh, R. Hogan, does it support 360 photos? At this time, no, we are building that out in the, ne in the next year. Uh, you've got the ability to add hyperlinks to comments. So you can add a link to a 360 photo or an expanded longer video. We are looking to add videos in there as well. Uh, Jason Satterthwaite, is there a way to take a picture directly from the edit comment screen? Uh, we are adding that. Right now, you've got to go into, um, you add the comment, and then you go over and you can add multiple photos. We're actually working on that right now. We might um, pull you in on some discussions where we're going to allow you to edit it straight from that screen. You can add the photos. Uh, Chris Matthews, uh, we've been using the companion and desktop writer for a long time. Can you tell me the boost to my confidence in making the switch? Um, uh, realtors are accustomed to seeing the format of the desktop report, report writer report. Uh, so if you're using the clean template, I say WebWriter is pretty close to that already. We are going to produce some more formats. Uh, we did work specifically with um, Realtors on the WebWriter format. They specifically asked that we kept the um, summary as clean as possible and as easy to read. And they did ask that we kept all the narratives as short as possible. So we did work with uh, Realtors directly. We have done um, focus groups with home buyers as well to make sure that, especially the summary, they understood that. The big items of feedback were keep the summary clean and make sure it's easy to read. Uh, I wanna make sure I'm not running over on time. Uh, if, we, if we run out of time, I will go through um, all of these questions and we will post um, some responses. Uh, just quickly- I give about 
10 minutes left just as so we have a oh, little time so 10 minutes no problem perfect okay uh let's have a look uh some of the other questions uh coming through uh in the report view it shows all the items minor observations monitor etc is there a way that says budget for replacement i don't see any way to populate that and there's no icon in the comments that correlates uh, so we've got out of the box uh, status and severity labels. We are working on allowing you to customize all of those labels. Out of the box, you get those, I think it's six levels which you can choose from. You can customize all those, you can change. Uh, we've uh, set up the comments already with some of those labels. You can override them, you can change them in the library. And then coming soon, we're gonna allow you to completely change and alter what the titles are and what the descriptions are as well. Let's have a look, see if there's any other things that have come through. Uh, I've got a question for um, Doug. Video would be key. Currently, I add uh, Suoscope videos to uh, reports. Now, you can publish those to a video sharing service. You can add them in the comment, but we are absolutely looking at that. We're looking at short videos that you can add directly from the app, and then longer ones that you can add a link for that get embedded into the report as well. And that's, that's a big reason why folks are moving away from uh, PDFs. If you're using a PDF, all those multimedia features um, go away. And I do encourage you to shop for uh, David Fiendarka's session uh, later on today, where he's going to be shoot, talking about the, really the benefits of the Home Buyer dashboard and all the things you get with having the multimedia reports over PDF. Any other questions? Uh, can you add attachments to web writer reports or must they stay as hyperlinks or other stored locations? So just like you can with uh, the desktop writer, I can go in and update or maybe I, I've uh, generated a form in a third party solution or maybe I've got a little pamphlet that I like to add as uh, tips and tricks for owning your new home. You can add all of those documents in the inspector dashboard and you can upload them and they all get delivered with the report as well separately as documents. And you can track delivery of those uh, separately. Let's have a look, see if there's any other questions that have come through. Uh, let me see if there's anything, anything you would like me to uh, have another run through. Uh, we can definitely do that as well. Uh, let me have a quick, see if there's anything. Uh, we've got the mobile apps. Uh, we're uh, just to give you a, quick update on some of the developments that are coming through. Uh, we've got an update for the iOS app that's coming uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, on the WebWriter side, we're updating the software probably every two weeks. You're going to see an update. Um, check out, uh, we'll send you a link to uh, the release notes, uh, and that will give you all these little minor updates. Uh, we are going to be, uh, the big things that we're looking at over the next few months, is allowing you to change the severity labels, building out a more extensive uh, comment library, making it easier for existing desktop writer users to pull across their comment libraries directly into the web writer. So really make that more seamless so you've got more options. Um, and then there's some other updates, uh, definitely some of the workflow items that uh, were raised about, hey, adding a photo directly from that comment view. Let's have a quick look. Uh, how will forms work now that we have uh, WDI and uh, da, 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 what was it? Uh, just looking through Doug's question here about um, forms and WDI. Uh, so you've got two options, uh, especially for WDI, what is it, MPMA 33. Uh, you can either use uh, the desktop if you're really tied to the form solution that's sitting in the desktop, you can use that. We do have a web-based form solution which does work for all the main forms that we uh, make available. It's included, we can send out a link for that. Um, that does include WDI, that includes MPMA 33 and all the major forms as well. And that's all web-based as well. Any other questions? Okay, great, thank you, Doug. Awesome, I think that, uh, oh, no, we've got another bonus question. No, we don't, it's already been uh, answered. Now, if you want to go through any of the other training, I do recommend that you go to our um, YouTube channel. That's where you'll find the masterclass videos. There's longer sessions as well. I've got a session on photo first reporting, seven minutes long. 
Um, there's another session on customizing the templates. Uh, we'll send out all the recordings from these sessions and we're, re we're um, releasing those all the time. So questions that come in from the Facebook group or our community channel, we're always putting out new videos to show folks how to do uh, new individual things. Hey Mike, I put, um, I put a link for the masterclass in the chat for everybody, the Web Writer Masterclass. And then we do, do you have a couple, we have a couple of new questions that came in. You have an, a minute still? Yeah, of course. So, um, um, so um, are you going, are you ever going to add a smart text like feature? Uh, I'd say I don't think we need uh, smart text. Uh, we are we're trying to solve the same problem. I think we're moving towards it in a, in a much faster way. So um, one of the things that we were demonstrating earlier is a lot of folks use smart text to show the severity label because they might want to have various different versions of the same comment and what location it was in. Now, if you report location by location, you don't need to list the location. Because if, you say, if you've already mapped the refrigerator to the garage, then you had a concern that label is added automatically. So you don't need that element of smart text. And we've made it really, really easy for you to search for comments. So you can go through, you can have multiple versions of the comment applying to the different severity labels, different remediation um, strategies. It's all there for you. It's a couple of clicks and you don't have to have uh, multiple versions. So. Right now, I'd say we're trying to address the same problems that Smart Text is addressing, which is really providing the location and providing some kind of customization. And really, we're allowing you to customize the comments on the fly, and you don't even need to list the location because Room by Room has it. Any other, okay. any other questions? I see one more. Um, so someone, uh, Brad does multifamily, and he wants to know, can you do a floor by floor? Uh, we should look into that. We are primarily working right now on standard residential. Now with locations, you could set up all the locations as floors. Um, now we'd love to work with, if he passes on the, the uh, details, we're doing some enhancements. We'd love to work with him on a, a custom template just by uh, just the multi-unit. I'd say probably location by location is the way that you'd be able to configure those floors. And you can then add, just like uh, I did with garage where I did ceilings, floors, walls, appliances. You can set out each of those locations as its own mini unit. And we can run through a demo of that. Mike, Great. Uh, we've, we've got one more question in here just about um, you know being able to differentiate between left side exterior rather than just exterior. Um, we can do that with tags, correct? Yeah, you could uh, you could set up the location as um, right now uh, we by default we've got exterior and we've got, we've got building exterior building exterior roof. You could set up one of those locations as building exterior roof north side, south side, east side, west side. Then that way, anytime you're adding some of those concerns, it's automatically adding those tags. That's a really good call out. Actually, what we'll do is I'll do a quick demo of that. And I'll maybe uh, post it on Facebook, just show how you could set that up. 